Hey guys, it's Janet Vosky. Today I'm going to do a poetry reading from my first poetry and prose book titled Bones. Bones is my navigation through an intense heartbreak. It is incredibly open and vulnerable and details the end of a relationship which was actually the beginning of my writing journey. The poems I will be reading today are titled Undeveloped and Developed. Undeveloped is the first entry in the book and Developed is the last. I wanted to read these two poems in particular because I love the connection between them. I specifically wanted to dissect these two entries because they contrast each other to contrast the beginning versus the end of my mentality throughout the book. As mentioned in most of my videos about my poetry, I love thinking about every aspect of my work and kind of like playing connect the dots, making a connection between them. Before I read them, I will caveat that the book I will be reading from is the 2021 published version. The original, which was published in 2019, very slightly. So let's get into it. So Undeveloped is on page four. Film must not be exposed to light. It's developed in a dark room until the time is right. I stopped taking photos on film because I was afraid of reaching the end of that role. Unsure if I could bear the thought of seeing you again, even if it would just allow me a memory from one of those days. I still haven't, and I'm not sure I ever will finish that role. So perhaps I will do what you must to film, develop myself in the dark, until it's time to be seen in the light. Do you ever just read something and see that you're a completely different person now? Because that just happened to me. <laughs> I love it though, because it's so good to see your own growth. Okay, so let's begin dissecting. <laughs> the first two lines, film must not be exposed to light. It's developed in a dark room until the time is right. The first two lines, I'm comparing myself to the way film must be developed. By writing it this way, there is a recognition and acceptance that it's going to take time. Time being important to the development of the film, referring to myself, because you can't rush that process. It's an acceptance of knowing that my experience to try to heal and go through this heartbreak and this agony and pain is going to take time and I can't rush it. I think accepting your reality and also listening to yourself and understanding your emotions is incredibly important to do during any healing process. In my opinion, I think concealing emotions or even ignoring them can hurt you more and affect your future relationships, including the one with yourself. There is no time limit, but there is something within these two lines that I recognize there's something I have to move towards. Because I recognize that I'm treating myself like film and I have to remain in the dark until it's ready to be seen by the light. Okay, the next paragraph, I stopped taking photos on film because I was afraid, I was afraid of reaching the end of that role. I'm sure if I could bear the thought of seeing you again, even if it would allow me just a memory from one of those days. This reminds me of, you know when you just meet someone and you are trying to remember their facial features, you're trying to remember certain details about their physical appearance, but you can't seem to remember? It's that but the opposite. <laughs> you can vividly picture this person while your eyes are closed, so you don't want to see them any more than when your eyes are closed. <laughs> so in this case here, I'm really trying to stress that I, I'm done. I don't want to see anything at all. Therefore, I don't want to finish this role of film because I will be expected to develop it. And I am currently not ready to develop it. Meaning also myself. It's also like when you close your eyes and you feel like you can't escape the memories that just seem to be flooding. Good times. <laughs> At the line at the end of that, how it says, even if it would just allow me a memory from one of those days, that line hits me even now. And it's not because of this particular situation, but it just reminds me of any relationship, any friendship, how you don't really realize that the moment that you are living in now or the moment you just had with your friends could be the last moment that will eventually turn into just a memory. Also for me personally with photos, whenever I look at a photo, I feel like I can hear laughter. I can hear the conversation that we had or the things we were talking about in that moment when those photos were being taken. Kind of like how music can make you feel like you're transcending into a different space or feeling. 
and in a way make us remember what we were doing, who we were with, etc. That's how I feel about photos sometimes. It's funny in the least humorous way. I better move on. <laughs> the next two lines, I still haven't and I'm not sure I ever will finish that role. I think we can all say we have experienced this moment where there is doubt. There's doubt in your ability to feel like you can overcome whatever difficulty you're facing, whatever heartbreak you're facing. With these two lines, I really wanted to elaborate on the fact that our emotions can be so confusing, particularly during these periods. Kind of like one of the stages of grief, denial. You want to ignore the facts, but they're staring at you right in your face. The last three lines. So perhaps I will do what you must to film, develop myself in the dark until it's time to be seen in the light. I remember when I wrote this, I wanted the last lines to also reflect the initial statement at the beginning because they both refer to dark and light and the reference to developing myself in the dark and being ready to be shown once it's light and when the time's right. After the doubt, denial, confusion from the previous lines, I also wanted to come back. That tinge of acceptance, of realizing that yes, it may be difficult, but this is my reality. And then instead of referring to the film being developed or me not wanting to develop the film, it's me saying, I have to develop myself. So there's also that parallel between the first two lines and the last two lines. Throughout all of my work, there's a lot of reflection that typically refers to dark, light and colors, trying to articulate my feelings and emotions into colors. Okay, so that was undeveloped. Before I continue to read Developed and begin to dissect that, I also wanted to note the structure of this book because sometimes I do get asked why or how I put poems in certain places or why I chose to do the chapters the way that I did. So overall, I loved the idea of having a poem at the beginning of the book and a poem at the end of the book that completely contrasted one another and really reflected my mentality throughout the beginning of the book versus the end. With Bones, overall detailing a very personal, difficult experience for me. I wanted some clarity around the structure of this book, including the placement of some of the poems. So Bones has six chapters in total. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. The last five chapters are my version of the five stages of grief. And the first chapter details the unraveling. So the beginning of the end. Okay, now I think we should read Developed and see how that compares. So Developed is on page 77. Sometimes after a while in the dark, you may feel you're still not ready. But sometimes, just like a train through a tunnel, you find your way out to the light eventually. I finally developed that role of film. I've lived black and white, grayscale, sepia, and full color. And I'm thankful for the spectrum. Okay. So with the first paragraph, sometimes after a while in the dark, you may feel you're still not ready, but sometimes just like a train through a tunnel, you find your way out to the light eventually. The first paragraph of developed, the language is completely different from undeveloped. In this first paragraph for the poem developed, it's in the second person. And when using the second person, it's an action being driven by the character. And in this case, the character is the reader, you. So I wanted these lines to direct the reader specifically for either a sense of comfort that it is okay to go through these emotions and feel this way, but also in the way for the character to self-reflect. With the next line, I finally developed that role of film. I wanted to change from second person back to first to impact the reader more in a way to show them that it is possible to heal after heartbreak. I also like the parallel of Particularly this line with the prior entry that I read because I admit I have finally developed that role of film. I wasn't afraid anymore. I wasn't hurt anymore. I was healed because I finally developed that role of film. I also like that I added the word finally because it can so badly feel like it's taking such a long time to go through that healing journey, especially after an intense heartbreak or breakup. So for me, it was definitely a finally moment. <laughs> the last lines. I've lived black and white, grayscale, sepia, and full color, 
and I am thankful for the spectrum. Okay, I love this line. The last line of me being thankful for the spectrum is me understanding that to be able to successfully heal through any heartbreak or difficulty, it's important to adapt and be able to truly understand what hurts, why it hurts, how you can address the issue. It's really trying to get to the bottom of it, and when you look back, it's kind of like seeing two completely different people. As mentioned earlier, when I referred to the dark and light, and how I liked referring to that as emotions and feelings throughout all my work, I also want to talk about it again, particularly with this last line, because with the last line, I added in black and white, grayscale, sepia, full color, and also being thankful for the spectrum. Why this is important to bring up while dissecting this piece is because I was no longer just mentioning dark and light as per the first entry in this book. I'm finally referring to shades, to different types of color, to tones, which reflects and symbolizes the in-betweens, every moment, the ones that hurt, the ones that made us cry, but also the ones that made us laugh and smile. This line, I was expressing gratitude. To have experienced something to make me realize how deeply I felt or can feel. I'm so very grateful because I really learned so much through, through this process and through this heartbreak. So if you are currently going through something, just know, trust me, it gets better. Okay. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed watching me read and dissect two of the entries from my first poetry book, Bones. If you are interested to buy a copy of Bones or any of my other books, I'll leave all the links in the description down below. But thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Hello. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I stopped. Why did I stop? Nobody knows. And details undeveloped. The entry undeveloped is the first entry. Blech. I wanted to read and dissect. Dissect. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. It just sounds weird. <laughs> dissect. 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 It's dissect. Throughout all of my work. Work. <laughs> sepia or sepia? Sepia? Sepia. 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 I can add this as a blooper, but I love when I read some of my older work and I know I'm a completely different person because I have done exactly how I described in this video and allowed myself that dark period to truly understand my emotions and what I'm experiencing, how I can heal or help myself through it and grow to become a better person. I just love that.